Hey ho. Hello. How's it going, Manu? Very well. Cool. We get to meet face to face for the first time. We see each other a lot in Discord uh, and online, a bit on Twitter. Uh, but now we get to do the four eye thing. I see you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I actually I would love to go to to Parallelipolis uh, last year, not last year, in 2019, I was uh, trying to go, but at the end, it, it didn't happen. But anyway, we, we met through online this time. Well, in October of this year, um, there's going to be uh, another HCPP. Uh, the theme this year is chaos. Uh, Sovereign will also be uh, involved, uh, involved with that. Uh, that's cool. So maybe you can make it up to Prague in October. I don't know. Uh, oh, no, it would be marvelous. I, 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 I didn't know. I, I will, I will try to make it. To make awesome, it awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's up on the website. Uh, Pre-sales haven't started yet, but uh, the theme is 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 up at uh, parallelnepolis.cz. Uh, there's links to HCPP uh, this year for people. Um, where are you? Where are you calling in from right now? Are you in I'm, I'm in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, in the suburbs of the city, like 60 kilometers from, from there. Uh, so, yes, in the south of Latin America. Yeah, so, I mean, you guys, like, did, did this stuff before MakerDAO, right? I mean, it was, the idea was weeks or months before MakerDAO launched, actually, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the idea belongs mainly to, to one of the other co-founders, uh, Max Cajusa. Actually, he thought about building a stablecoin before uh, Tether, and, but then <clears throat> Tether in launch and, and he, said, he thought that it didn't make sense to have a centralized stablecoin. So he started thinking about building a decentralized stablecoin uh, uh, on top of Bitcoin, uh, and then he knew about RSK, and well, we are Argentines, so obviously we knew about uh, RSK and the Gito, and in we start talking about this idea in 2017 uh, and uh, started full full time in 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 very very in in the in the in the last days of 2017. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, and we presented this to to the community. Yes, in the early 20, 2018, we started working uh, on, on this idea. Before we we knew about MakerDAO, like in March 2018, it, it was uh, already our, our idea was uh, being built. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty interesting. I mean, so here it is: an idea that happened earlier on Bitcoin, and then happened on Ethereum, took the world by storm, uh, and you guys were actually ahead of the curve. So if everybody wants to <laughs> take take a look at that, okay. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and let you get into it. Um, take about thirty minutes. Um, okay. And let everybody know uh, of, about money on chain and and how it's integrated with with uh, the sovereign platform already, uh, and then we'll come back after that and 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 talk a little bit about it. Great, great, cool. So I have a presentation uh, I will share maybe to to make it more. Um, I don't know if 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 it's possible to 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 share it. Yes, perfect. So, uh, what is Money on Chain? Uh, we are building uh, the central finance uh, protocol for Bitcoin, and our main objective is 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 here in uh, written is is bringing Bitcoin to the mainstream. We, as as I mentioned, uh, we are most of the founders are Argentines. We we been living in with. In my infancy, with hyperinflation, we live with a 50 to 100 percent inflation right now in Argentina, and our friends in Venezuela and other countries uh, are, are, are suffering, uh, you know, fiat problem. 
um, by, 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 uh, and we really understand that Bitcoin fixed that that problem. So, uh, but we we understand also that Bitcoin volatility make it harder for 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 newbies for early early users to use uh, Bitcoin. So we think really that uh, stablecoin will make sense for a lot of people and we wanted to build a stable coin on top of bitcoin <clears throat> so really what we think is that bitcoin is going to be the the, the basis of the financial system i'm really <laughs> really uh, happy about the, the news of el salvador yesterday we think that's the, the future that's the that the future is that in any country everybody is going to be able to to use bitcoin uh, in 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 a daily in their daily lives, and but for for that to be able, we need to build financial application on top of this base layer. So that's the main idea of what we are building. And the the problem that we, as I mentioned, we thought we we needed to solve is the volatility for everyday user. You know that if you are a merchant and you trade with Bitcoin and you are going to sell your your car and then you need to to, to buy another car to 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 replace the the the, the car you 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 sold, Bitcoin volatility make it very very hard to 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 work with Bitcoin because it it it, it is really really difficult. I I think I I don't need to to explain all the problem with cryptocurrency uh, volatility and of course there is many many other solutions for that for example as i mentioned very early tether and tether makes a lot of sense for a lot of people in the cryptocurrency <coughs> uh, space and usdc and others like MakerDAO, DAI, etc but we really thought when we started that being a, a bitcoiners that we needed a really decentralized solution and especially censorship resistant solution. I, most of us uh, had problems with money saved in banks and from one day to another, we lost all, all our money. So we really don't trust, uh, in, in my case, anything. I don't trust anything. So uh, a, a centralized solution, uh, uh, a token that represents at the end a bank deposit for me doesn't make sense as a, a solution for for anybody. So, what is money on chain? What we we have built, uh, and this is all built already. This is all working. There is some some pieces that are going to be. Uh, finished to implement in the following weeks, but I would say that 98% of what I'm going to explain is all implemented already. Chain has four main components. One is what we call a stablecoin protocol, and that protocol uh, allows to, to mint and redeem a stablecoin, which is called DOC that uh, is the first stable coin that uses only Bitcoin as collateral. Then we have oracles, decentralized oracles. Actually, some of these oracles are being used by, by Sovereign, for example, and other protocols already on, on RSK. Obviously, we, build, we, we use these oracles because we need it. When we started to build all these, there were no oracles on RSK and to be used by decentralized applications. So we, we look for all oracles and we thought that it would make sense to build our own for different reasons. And of course, also when we started, there were no, no sovereign, no any other, other exchange. And for certain special situations uh, on which the stablecoin protocol needs a secondary market, we need it. Uh, to have a, a, a secondary uh, market, a, a, a decentralized exchange. So we built that for mainly for that reason. If Sorin was already working, 
or RSK or RSK swap or any other uh, DEX, most probably we wouldn't have uh, built DEX. But when we started, it didn't exist, and we thought it was necessary to have a decentralized exchange uh, as part of the solution. And the last uh, component is the MOC token, which is not only the token. The, the main reason for the token existence is that we needed uh, for all, all this uh, system, all this protocol to be a Bitcoiner protocol, to be decentralized, we needed a token to govern the, the, this protocol and not to depend on some few people to make decisions. So the idea of the MOC is to provide governance. So very, very briefly, uh, the OMOX, there is some information. If you go to RSK de developers, you, you will find more technical, detailed information about the, the oracles of Manion Chain. It is a hybrid protocol, parties on chain, parties of chain. It allows uh, one of the most important things, it allows uh, to, 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 to record the price of initially Bitcoin price, but we are also recording other prices, like for example, Reef and, and Ethereum price. And it allows to record the price of these assets up to each block in RSK blockchain. So it's a very fast uh, protocol and it been used since we launched, so it works. And we really work, think it works very, very, well, very well. I'm not going to go deeply on, on this. If anybody is interested, we can make another, another call for that and another session for that. Regarding the stablecoin protocol, it has three components. The, the first one, as I mentioned, is the dollar on chain. It is listed in, in Sovereign. It's a stablecoin back by Bitcoin. The peg, the, maybe one of the most important differences about this stablecoin and other stablecoins is that the peg is guaranteed by the smart contract. You are able to send Bitcoins, $100,000, uh, and mint $100,000 of uh, dollar and chain and vice versa. And the peg, the price is guaranteed by the smart contract. And in, in other uh, tokens and in other stereo coins, the mechanism work with, with, uh, with, with a secondary market to, to define the price. Actually, that was uh, another protocol was asking us Okay, what's the, the price of DOC? From which oracle you, you make it? And we, we don't have an oracle to inform the price of DOC because the price of DOC is always one dollar. What we we get is the price of a uh, Bitcoin. And then regarding the BitPro, the BitPro is uh, represents the collateral in the in the protocol. Um, to be able to, to mint any dollar on chain before minting any dollar on chain, some Bitcoiner had to, to lock to mint uh, Bipro. You, 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 you lock your, your, your Bitcoins and the protocol issue uh, Bipro. And the Bipro is a, you, you lock it in a smart contract, obviously. And the Bipro is a token that you can you can hold and it's been uh, thought for for long-term bitcoiners it has free leverage it has coded income and it has uh, some other future like liquidity mining that i'm going to explain in, in a couple of minutes and then there is another so uh, actually it's not a token it's a position what we we explain as a token because it's it's easier but the BTCX is a, a, a 2x position on the price of, of long position on the price of Bitcoin. So as I mentioned, the, the, the main difference between dollar and chain and, and other stablecoins is, is about the price. Uh, the price is, is pegged. And of course, from my point of view as a Bitcoiner, the most important different thing about dollar and chain and other stablecoin is that it's backed by Bitcoin and it's a uh, censorship resistant. Mm -hmm. it, it, uh, it, there is no bank account behind the drone chain. Uh, it's only Bitcoin. It, 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 and, and that uh, is, is, a, is a solution contained inside the, the, a Bitcoin sidechain. Okay. 
So re regarding the, the BIPRO, actually when people think, uh, ask us uh, what is, how we build the BIPRO, the BIPRO is a token that we build it mainly for us as a Bitcoiners. It's the, the dream token for a Bitcoiner who wants to earn some more money on Bitcoin just for holding Bitcoin, but uh, using decentralized finance. So if you are holding Bipro, what you, you get is free leverage, uh, is small leverage. Uh, right, for example, yesterday was 1.13. Uh, so there is a lot of incentives uh, on that leverage not to go high and not to go too low. And uh, we are working even to, to make it as fixed as possible and near to 1.1. But if you hold Bipro, you don't have to pay for that leverage. And that's marvelous. You know, if as a Bitcoiner, I like to have him free leverage on an asset that I'm bullish on. Then you get some passive income that uh, that passive income is got mainly from, from traders. I'm, I'm going to talk about that. And then it earns a percentage of the fees of the protocol. And on top of that, it gets 10% of the MOC tokens, this governance token that I'm going to explain also in a, in a couple of minutes. It's a token, it's not a position, it's nothing about, uh, you can uh, secure it in your hardware wallet, you can hold your private keys, and you can change it in, in, in text, in sewing, whatever you want, you can use it to pay other things if, if you want. So that's also, and you can, can make a loan and you can take a loan using this, the, this, this token. So for example, in Sovereign also. So uh, from that point of view also is, is marvelous. So how it works, as I explained, it has a, a, a leverage. This is uh, from a couple of uh, weeks ago um, when the Bipro had only 1% one, 1 of leverage. But as you see, this is the historic leverage. Also, this is in March, as I mentioned yesterday. The, 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 again, the, the leverage was more or less 1.13. So this leverage right now is parallel. We, uh, it depends on the demand of the other actors. If, if more uh, DOC is minted, the leverage of the BPRO increases. If the, if the, if the BTCX uh, is minted, the leverage of the BPRO decreases. So it is variable. We have certain incentives inside the protocol to make it near to 1.1, but it's not fixed. And what we are working on is to make it as near to 1.1 as possible. Regarding the passive income, as I mentioned before, the, the, the people who is doing the, the, the Bitcoiners that are doing leverage operation on the platform has to pay an interest fee for that. And that interest goes to the BPRO holders. Actually, it doesn't go to the BPRO holders. It goes to like a bag. We call it a, a, a bag of RBTC. And all this bag represents the, the BPRO. So what at the end happens is that the price of the BPRO increases for this interest that is being paid by the BTCX traders. <clears throat> so, for example, this was a couple of also, it was in, in March, it was paying like 7%. Uh, yesterday it was paying 1.1%. Uh, so it's it's also valuable and this is an APR. Uh, so this is another uh, way how the BPRO increases its price. This all, all only can increase the, the price. Uh, I have not mentioned uh, the other thing, but I don't have any picture how to, 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 to show you. But 20% of the fees that are uh, paid by any user minting dollar on chain or BTCX or what, whatever token in the platform, 20% of the fees goes to increase the price of, of the BPRO. So if you add all, all this leverage plus, plus the the fees that user pays plus the plus the interest that the BTCX pays for using the, the, the leverage. In the end, what we expect is that the price of the BPRO will 
uh, go higher than Bitcoin in the long run, especially mainly for, for this free leverage. But on top of that, you have all these other uh, incentives. Uh, oh, Actually, not incentives, are financial mechanism for the BPRO to, to increase its it price. So this is also not updated. This is in March uh, 3, this, this year. So at that time, the, the Bitcoin was 50,000. BPRO array was uh, 64,000. Uh, actually, BPRO reached 80,000 at one moment when Bitcoin was 60 something. Um, actually, this is the performance in percentage. This is a uh, BPRO, uh, the, the percentage of, of the BPRO regarding the, the BTC price. So it earned like 20% uh, last year. This is also on March uh, 3. If you go, this, this has a link, if you go to, to our web page, Manion Chain, and you go to the landing of the BPRO, you have here solutions, and in solutions, you can choose, wait, my, my internet is Argentine, so it's slow. Uh, if you go to BPRO, uh, BPRO landing page, you will see this, stats at the end of this page uh, updated uh, for every day. Actually, this updates twice a day. So right now, the price of BPRO is like uh, $44,000 um, the, when the price of BPRO, this was from yesterday, actually, um, BTC was 36. Um, the percentage rate, as you see, even if the price of Bitcoin crashed, we, uh, the, the BPRO only lost uh, 3%, 3 points um, uh, since, since uh, this, the, the last uh, top, okay? <clears throat> so uh, people actually, for example, yesterday in our community, someone was asking, okay, but I hold BitPro and now I have less Bitcoins uh, because maybe he bought here. And um, yes, it could happen. Uh, and this is a long term, this is a token thought for, for, for long term holder, holders, Bitcoiners. In our simulations, if you hold this token for a long term, uh, it, as you see, especially in a bull run, uh, it can uh, earn a lot uh, on top of Bitcoins. Of course, we cannot. Uh, this is past performance. We don't know what is going to happen in the future. Our simulation shows that this is uh, an interesting token in that sense. This performance does not include the MOC token. Um, <clears throat> the MOC token mock liquidity mining rewards um, that if you go to, to our app, uh, I can show it le later actually, this is also not uh, quite updated, this, uh, this uh, screen. Uh, but you will see the mock rewards and, and the total mocks that you are being uh, earning this uh, for, for each day. So uh, each, th this, this MOC token reward program, this uh, mock liquidity mining, is not included in that percentage rate that been winning on top of Bitcoin, the, the BPRO. Regarding the BTCX, very shortly, it's a 2x long position. Uh, it, it is an important piece in, inside of the, of the protocol, but it's that. You, you need to be aware that this is a leverage position, so be careful. Uh, you could be liquidated if the price of Bitcoin goes down in 50% uh, during what we call a, a, a a settlement date, which is a, a settlement period, which now is fixed to 30 days. If you don't understand about leverage Bitcoin operations, please don't use this token. It's a risky token. So regarding MOC token, it's a governance token. It's a, the main reason why we build it is that we needed a token to decentralize the vote and veto on, on, on the pla platform updates and parameters. Uh, and it has uh, several future, 
features, uh, utility features for, for people to, to be interested to hold it. So 80% of the fees of the stablecoin protocol uh, goes to MOC token holders staking the tokens. So if you hold MOC token and you stake it, you are earning 80% of the fees and 100% of the fees of the, of the tax of the centralized exchange. And also, if you you stake these tokens, you have it has like its own liquidity mining program. We call it uh, mock rewards. Uh, it's 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 very important. I'm going to explain a little bit more about that. And on top of that, this this is one of the things that is not yet implemented. It's going to be implemented in the following weeks. You can pay with the MOC. You are going to be able to pay the fees of the protocol with a discount. How it being shared, 20% went to, to founders and a big team of advisors that helped to, to build this uh, since many years ago. 20% uh, go to early contributors, people have, who have financed developers and, and, and the developing of, of this uh, protocol. Uh, five percent uh, is in a in a in a sole purpose trust that uh, is only can spend this token to to develop the protocol, and fifteen percent is in a, in a treasury that is uh, actually controlled by the um, the rest of the MOC token holders. The the its stake that fifteen uh, percent. The, the fees from that stake goes to the to the treasury of the of the foundation. Uh, it's a, again it's a trust, a sole purpose trust that only spends to to develop this this product. And 2.5 percent started to be churned on Bpro holders uh, since December last year, and 37.5 percent is what we call the reward program is uh, the biggest uh, chunk the biggest piece of the of the cake goes to to users uh, who are interested to 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 and, and in, as incentives for for using the the protocol so from that 25% are going to 3% uh, are min, mint each uh, month um, is three percent of the remaining of this thirty-seven uh, percent, uh, and this is sure twenty-five percent goes to be pro holders and seventy-five percent goes to MOC token holders in in different uh, mechanisms. So this is very very shortly what is money and chain right now working including the MOC token uh, I'm going to explain very briefly uh, what is the SIP 17 which is uh, I, I think is going to be really uh, interesting for for sovereign community it's been proposing this uh, uh, sovereign improvement proposal being presented by a Bitcoiner, an Argentine Bitcoiner, a friend of us, but also a very early user of sovereign. So I love this SIP because, uh, it, you know, it, it's, uh, I, I, we, we, we know each other with Iago and Terrasque, and this is like, a, a global community of Bitcoiners, and then we have some user, a Bitcoiner, who been using our platform and using also Sovereign platform, and he proposed, well, why, why don't you work together and make some things? Uh, and he made this proposal. So this proposal pro proposal has three three things. One is uh, listing the MOC on Sovereign. So this token that I've been explaining, the MOC is listed in Sovereign. Actually, this is a picture from last night. Uh, so you can buy and, and, and sell MOC using Sovereign. That was the first thing that was going to happen. The second thing is the there is a mock rewards program already working, especially for, for, <clears throat> for Sovereign community, uh, financed by the, this the sole purpose trust, and um, it works like this. Uh, it it it's 
already started on June 1. Uh, it's going to last for 30 days and people, Bitcoiners, uh, providing liquidity to the DOC, to BTC pool, are going to receive uh, in total $37,500 uh, uh, worth in MOC. Uh, and it is, uh, you can add liquidity on, on Smart Bitcoin or DOC. A lot of this information is in sovereign Discord, so but I, I think it, it was important just to, to, to briefly explain. And regarding this, this is, is working. <laughs> so I, I'm really happy about this. This is, uh, as you see, the pool of DOC uh, to BTC is increasing each day. So the, this, this proposal, uh, shows that we can work together and make ideas and hopefully some ideas from Sobriton so so uh, make some proposal and some things for, for many projects in the in, in the ecosystem to work uh, jointly. The the third proposal is there is going to be an incentive for from sovereign community to reward dock lenders. Actually this is not in place yet it's going to be implemented in the following weeks up to our knowledge, uh, but already you can you can provide liquidity to uh, sorry you can you can lend dollar on chain. Actually, you can also lend Bpro in 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 the in the protocol, and you are being paid or you have to pay. But you you the idea is you can only use Bitcoin on on sovereign, and it works. So uh, there's many 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 options. Um, regarding the, the text, uh, it's not, as I mentioned, our main objective to, to build this uh, decentralized exchange. It is there, it, it works. Um, and the main difference with other uh, exchanges like a sovereign exchange is this is not an AMM, this is uh, based on an order book. And you can go and put uh, limit orders or uh, market maker orders. So again, I'm not going to explain deeply on this. If you are interested, there's some videos in, in internet or we can make another, another call especially for that. So uh, some people ask normally, okay, in which wallet can I use uh, this protocol? You can use it in with Metam Metamask, with Nifty Wallet, with Pexo, with Math in China, with Liquality. I have not included uh, here yet uh, Decent from Korea, uh, the Defiant, which is originally from Argentina, but it's all over Latin America, and you can use it also in, in other countries. Um, <clears throat> there is a, a direct integration with the Defiant Wallet. Uh, in the Defiant Wallet, when you use it, uh, you can mint and redeem, and it's like using the protocol, but directly from, from the, the mobile wallet. And of course, in Sovereign, as I mentioned, there is uh, in Hold, 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 you can buy Bitcoin and sell Bitcoin to BOC and also in Packpool. And so this is growing. And any idea to, 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 to add more uh, pieces and how to integrate this telecom or the BPRO in, in other protocols, we are hi highly interested. Actually, there is a program specially designed for that. Uh, on which uh, any developer that develops uh, a protocol uh, 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 on top of, of, of money on chain protocol will have what we call a revenue sharing. We, we have not this ready to, to communicate and to, and, and to explain, but this is coming also in the following weeks. So if you are thinking to build something on top of money on chain, you, if, you can be part of a revenue sharing program uh, that's going to be implemented in the following weeks. So uh, I have a demo if, if it's uh, necessary. I don't know, uh, Exit Sulfur, if, if uh, you want to see a demo or if there is some questions. Demo, yeah. That'd be great. I don't know in time. We are nearly 30. Okay. Yeah, we have plenty of time. Okay, perfect. So uh, I, I've been trying to go very fast, so I don't know if any question arises. So go, 
regarding the, the demo, uh, explaining how it works, um, this is the new home page. This is different to what I have shown earlier. Um, in this case, I'm connected to MetaMask. <clears throat> you can use MetaMask or Nifty Wallet also, or Equality Wallet, uh, anyone. If, if you use MetaMask, please be, be aware you need to configure it the the fees uh, to set it in 0.06 if not uh, the the bitcoin miners are going to be very happy but you are going to pay like using ethereum doesn't make sense uh, so um, please remember to go <coughs> to configure this to use the protocol <coughs> in in this in the home page you see for example i have 200 dollars I have a little bit like the equivalent of $100 in, in Bipro, and I don't have any, any long operation here. And since I mint this last night, I've been earning some, uh, some MOC tokens, and I can claim three uh, mocks, OK? Uh, this is the, the reward program that I've been uh, explaining uh, earlier. If you want to, to mint, actually, here, if you go what is called a change, actually, this is not technically, technically an exchange, or you can think it like an exchange uh, to a, a big pool of in a protocol. What you are going to do here, actually, is to mint tokens. Uh, so for example, if I want to mint a dollar on chain, I can select the total, or I can only want to mint 20, 20 docs. If I want to mean 20 doc, I just confirm. It tells me that it's going, it's going to be a fee of 0.1. This is what is going to be shared on MOC token holders and Bipro holders. I confirm. Then it opens my MetaMask wallet. <coughs> Here, if you are using MetaMask, is where you need to, to see that the price is 0.06. If not, uh, please remember to go to, to, to configure this. Um, and if you confirm, this is an on-chain operation on the RSK blockchain. This is pending in 20 to 40 seconds. I will have more DOC. Uh, as you see here in my wallet, uh, I have, oops, I have right now 218 uh, DOCs and I have minted, I just forgot, I think 20. So, uh, well, already it's been mint, I see. Uh, no, it's not. It's, it's pending. So in a couple of seconds, it's going to be mint. Um, so this is for minting. Actually, these are token that does not exist. Um, you are minting. And if you want to mint Bipro, it's exactly the same operation. It's very easy. Always remember not to mint all your RBTC. You need to keep some RBTCs for paying the gas, uh, for moving the tokens, for redeeming tokens, for minting new tokens. So normally I keep at least $20. $20. Uh, right now, minting DOC or minting Bipro or, or doing BTCX operation costs like uh, operating these contracts costs like $1, one, one, one $20. Uh, uh, obviously, Moving this token is much cheaper. It costs like uh, six six cents or seven cents. Um, so this is already confirming. So now I have. Um, if I go to my home page, I'm very impatient. So I I in in a couple of more seconds is this is going to be updated. Okay, <clears throat> let's see. We are one of the things that we are working on is to improve in the, the user experience. So all this uh, is going to be much faster also in the following weeks. 
Um, this is part of the things that right now we are working on. <clears throat> One second. And my, my, my internet is not very fast today also. The other thing that I'm going to show right now in, in a second is the, the metrics. So now I have my my other $20. The same process is for minting Bpro and the same process is for minting BTCX. It's very, very, very easy to, to use. Regarding the, the metrics, uh, this is more advanced for more advanced users who want to understand what is happening be behind the smart contracts. And this is also going to be updated with many, many more metrics. So, for example, <clears throat> a lot of people ask us, uh, OK, but what is the risk of holding Bpro? And could the DOC be liquidated? Or any of these kind of questions. So we have as much information as we can on this screen for anybody to be able to, to see the health of the, of the protocol. <clears throat> right now, the protocol for each DOC that is minted, uh, you have the equivalent of $7.47 uh, in Bpro as collateral <clears throat> when the coverage, the, the target is uh, four. So you have plenty of, of, of liquidity, plenty of collateral for each DOC. And um, so, and here you can see the current BPRO leverage, which is 1.14. This is the total DOC that been minted. Uh, right now is more than 2 million and are available 2.5 million to be minted by anybody who wants to, to hold a stablecoin back by Bitcoin. This is the total amount of BPRO that been minted. This is the current total of BTCX operation right now. Uh, so there is a lot of information here and more information that's going to come in the in the following weeks. So this is a very brief uh, demo of how this works. Is again is very easy. You just have to hold some smart Bitcoin and in your wallet. You connect your wallet and you can mint and redeem tokens. If you are going to use hardware wallets on uh, other things, could be some more things that you have to do, but. This is very briefly what it is. Amazing. So I have a couple of questions. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so the first one that sort of like uh, uh, shocked me was that Bpro is worth more than Bitcoin at numerous points, uh, with even a twenty percent premium or something on that. What was? What were those numbers when Bitcoin was well, at? Right. Right now, as I mentioned, we can see it. Um, we can see it um, online. The Bpro right now is 23.35% on top of Bitcoin. <coughs> when we launch the, the, the protocol, the, the price of Bpro was exactly the same as Bitcoin. And since then, the only way for, for the Bpro to increase is, as I mentioned, these factors that are working. This is a, uh, when we say the, the price of Bpro is this, it, it doesn't depend on a secondary market. This is guaranteed by the smart contract. If you send right now, actually, I can go again to the protocol. If you go to, to the exchange and you, you send, one Bitcoin, one Bitpro, the protocol will give you back more uh, RBTC, okay? And again, why it had happened? Because the, the protocol user been paying fees, the BTCX uh, traders are been been paying interest rates to the Bitpro holders, and because it has this free leverage that is being provided by the DOC token holders that make uh, that when the price of Bitcoin goes up, the Bpro will go higher, okay? So, for example, again, as I mentioned, if I go here and I go to Bpro and I put one, one Bpro, it will, the protocol will give me back 1.23 Bitcoins, okay? Um, 
and this is not set by a market. This is set by the protocol, okay? So I, but the next question is, is what sort of gains have you realized uh, in using this? Well, <clears throat> the, the, the gains uh, for using it is, is depends on, on each actor. Uh, if you are an Argentine, if you are a Venezuelan, uh, if you are a person in Lebanon or, 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 or whatever. And or you America need, uh, or Europe very soon. <laughs> well, I don't know. But whatever you are, and, and for example, in, in, in my country, you, you are not allowed to buy more than an X amount of dollars in a bank account. So if you want to, to, to store up, have some store of value in a stable coin, censorship resistant, uh, and you don't want to use a bank account and you want to hold it in Bitcoin, well, you can use the dollar on chain. So for that kind of person, it's, it's a perfect uh, use case, okay? Just holding money in US dollars, but instead of using US dollars, you are using Bitcoin, okay? Um, again, censorship resistant, and um, you can hold it in your treasure. So that's a use case for, for and once you, you, you have it, you can go and lend it uh, in, in sovereign, or you can take a loan in sovereign. So this being thought for Bitcoiners that are willing to use a stable coin, or people who don't know that are Bitcoiners, <laughs> actually, uh, we are providing this solution for early users of Bitcoins. So I'm uh, curious, why do you think that Ethereans are, are so much more willing to use uh, stable coins than, than Bitcoiners? Is it uh, so essentially fallout from, from uh, Tether, suspicion of Tether, uh, suspicion of Ethereum? What, what are you, as a Bitcoiner and somebody in, intimately involved with the project, what sort of arguments against it do you hear from people? Against, sorry, against, uh, so you're going to disable uh, the presentation. I don't know which button I need to act uh, here. Stop. No, it's it. okay. We, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, again, the, the what question. What are the barriers to adoption, so to speak? Yeah. Yes. Well, I, I think many Bitcoiners use tethers. Uh, a lot of Bitcoiners use tether. Most of us uh, hold, try to hold as much as possible. Uh, Bitcoin, I think, but for daily life, a lot of Bitcoin, as I imagine, in Europe hold euro in a bank account or hold actually one of the things that we are planning to implement is the euro on chain, uh, hopefully this year. Uh, and, and so Bitcoiners use fiat a lot of, I, I know very few Bitcoiners maybe like me <laughs> that try to hold everything in Bitcoin, but you know, they use fiat, they use also um, the, the, the <clears throat> they use uh, other stable coins. And the idea is to pro provide a stable coin that is Bitcoin at the end. When you are holding, uh, when you are holding uh, dollar on chain, what I'm always say is you are holding Bitcoin. There is no way to mint dollar on chain without Bitcoin can't happen. Uh, you are not using a bank account. You are only using Bitcoin, Bitcoin hash rate to secure this through uh, RSK. Um, so it, it's a, a stablecoin made for, for, for us. Right. So I, I, I've thought for many, so one of my, one of the narratives that I hate the most in, in, in Bitcoin is banking the unbanked because I, I feel like the mission is actually the opposite to unbank the banked. <laughs> well, I'm as a, a as an as an agent then I can tell you that I'm not holding any money in banks for many, many years. So I I don't want to be bank. I, I don't I, I've been I've been not... out since 2013 basically. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing that you need to use because if you want to pay Netflix, it's very difficult to pay Netflix uh, for your kids uh, using Bitcoin. Hopefully, you will be able to do that. Actually, using well, you can do that over over gift cards and and Panvala. I mean, there are yeah. 
there are yeah, ways to do it. But for example, in, in Argentina, to, to get gift cards is very difficult because it's censorship is is uh, actually I, I as an Argentine cannot use PayPal, luckily. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I, as an American, can't use PayPal. I mean, you know, PayPal. Who, I, I I always try and figure out who actually uses it, but um, it's a pretty but, unusable service. Yes, I, I don't buy this. Uh, uh, actually, what we we are building is is for 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 people maybe not to to bank and bank, but to to make bitcoiners the unbank. Uh, we don't. You don't need a bank. You can use Bitcoin. That's what I'm saying it's unbank the bank, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, you know, that's 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 the first part of the the thing that I've thought for for many years. Uh, the second thing is is that um, what I find really fascinating um, is that these stablecoin projects are coming out of what we uh, so arrogantly with great pride uh, called the global south um, that's you know basically been financially and politically repressed uh, by America my country of birth for generations um, and and so so I've always thought that the innovation um, is and the and the uh, acceptance usage growth is coming out of out of what we call developing or underdeveloped countries because they're not because they're not burdened by legacy institutions and legacy infrastructure and so here it is that we have failing currencies uh, in south america multiple failing currencies um what sort of time frame do you see for europeans americans chinese other world currencies in in facing uh, this type of inflation, and um, I mean, key use case for for sound money that was baked in from square one when the white paper came out in anticipation. So, what what sort of time frame do you see? I was uh, listening yesterday to to Robert Pritlop, and he was explaining, you know, six trillion dollars being print last year. So it's I don't know. It, it, and it's an addiction, the, the printing of money. So hopefully for um, Americans, hopefully for European, anybody of you live what we have lived and what we are living right now. Uh, because it's not ha something that I, 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 I wish to anybody because inflation is poverty for everybody. So it's, but, you know, I think it's, it's inevitable that it's going to happen if the governments continue doing what they are doing. Uh, I had an interesting experience a couple months ago. I, I, I sold an NFT of the first tweet about Ethereum for $21,000 uh, to uh, a trader in Dubai. And I wouldn't have even come out on the idea of a guy from Argentina uh, a, a professor who teaches uh, about blockchain technology had reached out to me and asked to buy the tweet. And I asked him how much he wanted to give me for it. And he was like, oh, I can give you like, you know, 20 bucks. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, um, I'll sell it. And, and, and if, you know, I get any money for it more than that, I'll, uh, you know, I'll give you 10% of it. And so I gave him 2000 bucks um, as soon as the tweet sold. And he was like, you know, you just financed, you just financed my life for a year um, as a university professor here. Thank you so much. And so, you know, we hear about it um, here in the West or here in the North, but I don't think it really has sunk in. And I don't think it's really baked into our genes, uh, you know, when when the Deutschmark uh, collapsed. It's so short ago, right? It's just Second World War. So, so we're talking about 80 years ago. And we learned about it in history class and everything, and, and people just don't think it can can happen again. Um, it feels like to me. I I think uh, the the problem with inflation is like the 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 history of the frogs and uh, in boiling water. When it starts to to hit and hit, and you are in a in a, in a, in 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 a and at the end you you are boiled inside the water. Uh, it, 
it, it starts slowly most times. Uh, I, I have lived hyperinflation, I, and I'm living in a, I think right now in Argentina it's like 100% inflation. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, it, it's, it's, it's not So let me ask you a cultural question, yeah. right? So what do you see as the change in people's so mentality or spirit or vibe living under hyperinflation, not just your own person, but how, how, how's your whole culture? Are well, you in, 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 in Argentina, I can tell you that not? most people try to, to, to spend uh, all the money that they get very, very easy, very, very, very fast, sorry. And um, if you save, you look for any anything. Most more Argentines uh, uh, save in dollars. Uh, I know that for a Bitcoiner, especially in the West, in the in, in developed countries, you you think well, how stupid. But uh, and when I say think about dollar and chain, I have mixed emotions. But I I think most people is is used to to dollars uh, in uh, and they think of dollar an euro um, as a hard currency, in, especially in Latin America, especially in Nigeria, especially in all these uh, high inflation countries. And it's much better than using uh, this, this other fiat that is being, you know, is, But that's is, essentially is, why we're printing so many dollars is because it's the world reserve currency. And if we don't print it to all of the countries that are in debt to America, they can't pay their debt back. It's just a well, vicious circle. Uh, yes, I, I don't know. Maybe I ho hopefully I, I see a, a light in them. I, I think that uh, maybe the, the, the Bitcoin make. Uh, I, I was listening yet two days ago to to Cynthia Lumins and and maybe some representatives, uh, some uh, some some people in in US uh, think about going back to a bitcoin standard where uh, governments print money but back by bitcoin for example that would be great and this could happen i don't think it's going to i don't i really don't think it's going to happen in the next uh, few years uh, but it could happen in in next few decades uh, actually, I I think it, I think it's, it's more likely to happen inside of ten years than it is after ten years. To be honest, if it doesn't happen inside of ten years, the likelihood decreases, in my opinion. But uh, Manu, yes. yeah, Manu, we're at the top of the hour. In three minutes, got to invite a uh, smuggler on. Uh, thank you so much for for coming on and and familiarizing people with with money on chain and dollar on chain uh, and. Good luck uh, as part of the the sovereign ecosystem. Thank you so much for for bringing another permissionless, borderless, unstoppable uh, tool into uh, into the ecosystem. Man, we'll see you see you online. Thank you, thank you a lot. I'm, I'm we are really really happy to be part of a sovereign a community and ecosystem. Uh, as I mentioned, I know Yao, and now I know you, and I've been. I know a lot of people who have been working for, for sovereign, for building sovereign, and I highly share the, the ethos of, of uh, the Bitcoiners ethos be, behind sovereign. So I, I'm I'm really happy to, to be here and to and and to be part. Cool man. See you online. Thank you.